Hello, this is Dr. Grande. Today's question is, what causes narcissistic personality disorder? Now, I'm going to refer to narcissistic personality disorder as NPD. And when we talk about causation in mental health, we use the word etiology oftentimes. So if a factor is etiological to NPD, that means we believe there's some sort of causal component. So when we consider narcissism, it's important to understand that narcissistic characteristics are part of normal human development. We would expect to see narcissistic characteristics in childhood and adolescence. So quickly I'm going to review the symptoms of MPD and then we'll get to the possible etiological factors. So with NPD we see a grandiose sense of self-importance, fantasies of unlimited power and success, feeling special or unique, needing excessive admiration, a sense of entitlement, exploitive behavior in relationships, a lack of empathy or reduced ability to experience empathy, envy, and being perceived as arrogant or engaging in arrogant behavior. Not all of these symptoms are required for a diagnosis of NPD, and not all of these symptoms would be considered a normal part of development. But versions of these symptoms, versions of these characteristics, would be seen throughout development, childhood and adolescence, as I mentioned. So when we talk about etiology, it's first important to understand that we don't really know what causes really any mental health disorder. We have a lot of theories, and the evidence lines up with some of those theories fairly well in the case of some mental health disorders and not as well with others. One of the problems with narcissistic personality disorder is that there's not really a clear definition of what the disorder is. Now, the DSM has a clear definition, but not everyone who conducts research on the causality of narcissistic characteristics agrees with that definition. So there are essentially three popular theories about the causality of NPD. The first is that it's inherited. We call this heritability. And when we look at mental health disorders, it's not unusual that a percent of the contribution is thought of as genetic in many cases. We look at this as heritability versus environmentability. The amount of variance that can be explained by genetics versus the amount of variance that can be explained by stressors or the environment. So when we look at NPD, the heritability is somewhere between 40 and 65 percent. So there's a fairly significant contribution from genetics to the development of NPD. The next area is the structural changes or differences that we see in the brain. A lot of studies have been done using equipment to scan the brains of individuals with NPD and individuals who don't have NPD and look at the various differences that might be there. Now one of the problems with these studies is that there have been some structural differences identified but it's not consistent across all presentations of NPD. Now the differences that have been identified are related to areas of the brain responsible for social behavior and emotional regulation which would be consistent of our understanding with what we see in NPD in terms of the symptom criteria. The last area of potential etiology, of course, is the environment. And a lot of focus with NPD is on experiences during childhood. We see certain characteristics more associated with NPD than others. So whenever we talk about etiological factors in mental health disorders, we're oftentimes talking about associations that we see. Just like the heritability and the brain structure, it doesn't mean that genetics or the brain structure cause NPD. It just means there's an association. And the same is true with the environmental factors, including the experiences in early childhood. However, some of the factors that seem to have an association with an increased risk of developing NPD would be a situation where a child receives a lot of praise, excessive praise, and also excessive criticism. So there's not really much area in the middle. We also see lack of parental empathy as a factor. Praise for abilities or appearance instead of other characteristics. And an emphasis on status or achieving success, meaning an emphasis created by the parents imposed on the child. Other potential etiological factors include emotional abuse and neglect 
And we see these for a number of personality disorders and a number of mental health disorders that are not personality disorders. So emotional abuse and neglect seem to cause a lot of mental health difficulties later in life. We also see with NPD over-evaluation by parents. So repeatedly over-evaluating the characteristics of a child without an emphasis on balance, without looking at some of the areas of improvement as well. So consistent over-evaluation. We also see inconsistent parenting, authoritarian parenting, and parents who don't supervise the child regularly, so a lack of supervision. Another theory with NPD is that it's caused by learned behavior. And this one is really consistent with the genetic piece. So what could explain the high heritability in addition to genetics could be that really what's happening is the parents of individuals with NPD would be more likely to have narcissistic characteristics and the children are simply learning that. It's learned behavior. So they grow up learning to be arrogant, to lack empathy, to require excessive admiration and the other symptoms we see with NPD. So it's important when we look at studies that examine heritability that we make sure in that research methodology that the research is accounted for the possibility of learned behavior. We also notice as a potential etiological factor that parents of individuals with NPD have a higher probability of being unable to recognize, name, and regulate emotions. So when an individual is growing up, their parents really couldn't identify and regulate emotions and teach the child to be aware of emotions. Now this is really consistent with what we see in NPD. A number of individuals that suffer with NPD lack emotional awareness, not just the empathy piece. Usually we do see a deficit with empathy, but they lack emotional awareness in general. Individuals with NPD often find themselves looking to other people to help identify emotions for them. So again, this is quite consistent with the possible etiological factor of having parents that didn't do a good job identifying and regulating emotions. That whole emotional awareness component really isn't well developed oftentimes in individuals with NPD. So those are some of the possible etiological factors for narcissistic personality disorder. NPD is a destructive disorder. It comes with a lot of pain and suffering, not just from the symptom criteria, but also from comorbidity. We see a lot of other disorders that co-occur with NPD, most notably depression, anxiety, and substance use disorders. So it's important for mental health clinicians to continue to work to try to identify the etiological factors of this disorder. I hope you found this description of the etiological factors of NPD to be interesting. Thanks for watching.